Let's begin our service. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. I invite you to stand as we sing our first song together. Seek ye first. The Gospel reading for today begins at the 13th verse of the 12th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who sent me to be a judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. <coughs> the land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do, for I have no place to store my crops? And then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things which you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. And our second reading begins at the 32nd verse of the fourth chapter of the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned they held in common. With great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, 
for as many as owned lands or houses and sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I first read the text for today, I thought of two things. The, con the concept of compromise and the story and life of St. Francis of Assisi. It also reminded me of a billboard that I used to pass every day when I was going to college. On this billboard it said, because compromise is not in your nature. The billboard is advertising for a new living community that they were building with a first class luxury golf course and of course all the modern luxuries you could ever dream of. The concept and the concept context in advertising seem to suggest that you would not have to compromise on anything. You could have it all. And that you would receive all that you ever dreamed of. Along with this, it also suggested that this was a positive thing and that everyone should be doing it. I took the following, took it to the following conclusion, which is that no one should ever compromise on anything. It should always just be given to us. We shouldn't have to work for anything and we shouldn't have to ask for anything. It should just be there, waiting for us. It's an interesting thought, isn't that? Think of all those things that you want. What are the chances that they're just sitting there waiting for you when you open your front door today? Of course, I had to ask the question of myself. Is compromise in my nature? Compromise is commonly thought of as something that we do when we realise that we can't have everything we want. I wonder if this was the reason why St Francis of Assisi gave up everything. In 1208, St Francis heard the call, go, sell all you have, Take nothing for the journey. Deny yourself and follow Jesus. Let's just sit with that for a moment. Sell all you have. That's everything. Take nothing for the journey. Deny yourself every little treat and pleasure and follow Jesus. I'm sure we've all had that moment throughout our lives when we've been packing up to a move house and we say to ourselves, I'm going to downsize. I'm letting go of everything I don't need anymore. I'm only taking what I need. Although the list of what we need seems to be growing. We believe that we need bottled water over tap water. That we need the latest smartphone with the best camera on offer to capture every Kodak moment, of course, put on Facebook or TikTok. <laughs> Don't forget the pay TV. Foxtel, Stan, Netflix, they're all there, just waiting for us and our viewing pleasure. The house with two toilets, the house with two cars and the driveway. And don't forget the NBN to watch the Netflix and the North <laughs> Fox Town. The disgrace comes when we realise that what we have achieved and gained has all come because of, what, of the cost of the dignity and lives of others around the world. Somehow on the other side of the world, they compromise something, so we would have everything. The disgrace comes when we realise 
that we have kept our information, our education, our technology and our compromise to ourselves. Sadly, the rich young fool in the story, I'm not sure if he's young, but the rich fool in the story decided to build a bigger and better shed to store more stuff. His compromise was about him, his needs, his desire, his growing wealth. I wonder how many of us are also caught in these desires. Do we really trust that God actually knows what we need and that he will actually provide it for us? The text today from Acts shows a different worldview, one where we live to share with each other. We offer all that we have in the hope that others will be helped. This text is also written in light of the resurrection. At the moment we are learning a little more about compromise with the price of everything going up. We are starting to ask, do I really need this? I wonder, are we asking for the right reasons? Are we hearing the call of God in our life? To sell everything, to pack nothing, to deny ourselves, to follow Jesus? Or are we trying to budget the household budget? Like St. Francis, are you willing to sell everything? I'm reminded of the biggest compromise that we've ever known in human history. That of God giving up his son to the world so that he could experience life on earth. God did this out of his never failing love for his children on earth. It is through this act of grace that God has sacrificed his only son so that the children of earth could live without sin, so that they could find forgiveness in the love and grace of God. In the end, God did sacrifice and he did compromise. God could have just given up on us all and let us kill ourselves out, which I'm pretty sure we would have done a pretty good job of. But instead, God intervened. God offered a new hope, a hope that is based on the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus is often referred to as the one example of how to live. If this is the case, then I believe we need to look more closely at the example of Christ himself and how he lived. For Christ offered his life. Battling desires and greed is no easier for a monk or a banker or a real estate broker. Jesus' call to renounce greed is for us all, not just for the spiritual elite. How you do that is a personal and complex spiritual discipline based upon God's unique call on your life. St. Francis himself was not a unique figure who transcended history. He was a normal human being who grappled deeply with the invitation of Jesus to give all, take nothing, and embrace the cross. And that is a conversation, not just for a short stroll on the beach at sunset, but for an entire lifetime. Christ offered his life in obedience to his Father, but also in love. This is summed up in the following statement of Christ on the cross. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. I thought we'd finish the sermon with the song which is actually the prayer of St. Francis himself. Make me a channel of your peace. So let's stand together and sing.
I'm going to invite you, if you feel able, and if you would like to, to join us in an affirmation of faith, which is going to be on the screen. Hopefully you can all read it. We had to increase the print size this morning on the screens, so that's why it's a bit messy in some places. So please stand with us as we say together an affirmation of faith. We believe in God, creator of the world and of all people. And in Jesus Christ, incarnate among us, who died and rose again, and in the Holy Spirit, present with us to guide, strengthen and comfort. We believe, oh, I'm back. <laughs> Lord, help us, help our unbelief. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom in the upholding of human dignity and community, in every expression of love, justice and reconciliation, in each act of self-serving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gifts entrusted to that us, in all responsible use of the Earth's resources. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. We confess our sins, individual and collective, by the silence or action, through the violation of human dignity, based on race, class, age, sex, nation or faith, through the misuse of power, in personal, communal, national and international life, through the search for security by military and economic forces that threaten human existence, through the abuse of technology which endangers the earth and all life upon it. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. We commit ourselves individually and as a community to the power of Christ to take abundant love for all humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith and hope <coughs> that God's kingdom may come. For the kingdom, the power, are yours, now, now and first. forever. Amen. I'll let you sit down for this one because I didn't get in before you all sat down. <laughs> but if you want to stand, you can. But we're going to see another song, Here I Am, Lord. But if you want to stay seated, you're welcome to. Let's pray for our world. Oh Lord, our God, you hear our prayers before we speak, and answer before we know our need. Although we cannot pray as we ought, may our spirit pray in us, drawing us to you and towards our neighbours. We pray for peace in the world. Disarm weapons, silence guns. Put out ancient hate that still smoulders, or flames in sudden conflict. Create goodwill between every race and nation. Bring peace on earth, O oh God. We pray for those involved in world government, in agencies of control and compassion, who work for the reconciling of the nations. Keep them hopeful and work with them for peace. Unite our broken world, O oh God. Hear our prayers, Almighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ, who prays with us and for us, to whom we praise forever. Amen. We're going to have the words up for the song, Give Thanks, and as we do that, we're going to collect the offering. So, we'll not collect, I'm going to invite you to come forward and offer your offering as the song is playing. And so you sing along as you come forward. Thanks. Giver of every good thing, 
We bring to you bread and wine for our communion, loves and gifts for your kingdom, all for the transformation through your grace and love, made known in Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, the Holy Spirit keep you, this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.